Tonight we have a brand new archetype from Legacy of Destruction, and this archetype is called the Rika. Now it is a archetype that's based around three types, being plant, insect, and reptile. So let's take a look at these cards. There's a total of nine of them, so get some popcorn and let's have some fun. First off, we have the I think the most important card of the deck being the level one. We have Raika no Mariko Ube, and it's an Earth Plant effect, level 1, 0 attack, and 0 defense. You can only special summon with the first effect of this card's name once per turn, and you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. First effect is you can special summon this card from your hand by sending one insect, plant, or reptile monster from your hand to the graveyard. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add up to two of your Raika cards with different names that are banished or in your deck to your hand except Raika no Mariko Mary Ubi and then banish one Raika card from your hand. Also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except insect, plant, and reptile monsters. This might find an interesting home in Rika Sun Avalon because it's a plant extender or starter when you look at it but also it's actually really good in its own sort of way because it gets two of your cards to the hand and one to the banished. So I'm going to say sorry for all the pronunciations of these cards because they are very interesting names. I think they're all sorts of Japanese names, but I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on that. And up next we have a insect monster. This is Raika no Yabazuka Mikria? Mikri? I am going to just butcher all these names, so I apologize. It's a light insect effect, level 3, 1500 attack, 0 defense, and this card can only be special summoned through its first effect once per turn, and you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. You can special summon this card from your hand by returning an insect, plant, or reptile monster banished. From your banished cards to the bottom of your deck, that is actually really interesting. And if this card is sent to the graveyard as a link material for a Raikei link monster, you could target one level 4 lower Raikei monster in your graveyard other than a copy of itself. Special summon it in face-up defense position. Very, very interesting link climbs you can do with that because there's a link 2, 3, 4, and 5. So very dependent on what you want to link up into and very dependent on when you need it during your combo. So honestly, I think this is another 2 or 3 of since... The level 1 is definitely going to be a 3 of for the deck. And to finish up the tri-type of the plant insect and reptiles, we have the reptile monster, which is Raikei no Yoritokage. It is a dark reptile effect, level 4, 0 attack, and 2300 defense. If this card, or this card can only be su special summoned through its first effect once per turn, and you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. First effect is you can special summon this card from your hand by banishing an insect, plant, or reptile monster from your graveyard. Already very good. Uh, you can discard one insect, plant, or reptile monster from your hand and target one face-up non-insect, plant, or reptile monster your opponent controls. Return it to the hand. Targeting removal. That's actually very good because it fills up your graveyard. It's a free extender when you realistically look at it. And overall, definitely one of the cards that you want to pair with the Mariko Ubi. So that's very, very nice. Now let's get into the main bulk of the extra deck. There's four of them being a Link 2, Link 3, Link 4, and a Link 5. Now this first one is going to be very interesting, to say the least, because it's one of the prime Link 2s that we want to run, being Rika no Mushadoro, or Mushad. Dokuro. There we go. It's a fire plant link effect monster with 1600 attack and it points bottom left and bottom right. Materials are two insect plants and or reptile monsters and you can only use the first and second effect of cards with this card's name once per turn. And also during the turn you activate either effect you cannot special summon monsters except insect, plant, and or reptile monsters. So the first effect is you could target one Raikou monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense. They have learned from Sprite Elf. 
And if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one insect, plant, or reptile monster you control. Place that on the bottom of the deck, and if you do, special summon this card. Amazing type of extension, and it also gets around Bestial, so that's a plus. Being able to summon this out, summon out the level 3, and just doing many other plays, very, very good. Honestly, this might be a 3 of in the extra deck, maybe a 2. But we shall see what people actually test with this whole entire archetype. So let's take a look at the next extra deck monster. This is a Link 3, and honestly, it's going to be quite interesting. It is Rika no Oga Minushi. It is a Link 3 Wind Insect Effect monster with 2300 attack. It points left, bottom, and bottom right. It takes 2 plus insect, plant, and or reptile monsters. You can only use the first, second effect of cards with this card's name once per turn. First effect is you could banish two insect, plant, or reptile monsters from your graveyard, add one Rika trap from your deck to your hand. So there's going to be multiple traps in the future because we have one to look out tonight. And if this card is in your graveyard, you could target one insect, plant, or reptile monster you control, place it on the bottom of the deck. And if you do special summon this card but you cannot special summon Monsters except reptile, plant, and insects. So realistically, all the link monsters do the same, which is very interesting to say the least, but it's really, really nice because you can just recycle themselves, summon them back, and link up higher. So this is essentially just a link climb deck, and I'm very interested to see where people go. This really goes with the insect that they recently reprinted, so, overall, so far, pretty good. Up next, we're heading to Link 4, and I think this is the one that's probably going to get a Starlight Rare. Because, of course, waifus get Starlight Rares, and many other things get Starlight Rare, especially a card like this. This is Raika no Kusarigami. It's a Fire Reptile Link Effect Monster with 2900 attack. Link 4 points bottom left, bottom right, bottom and right. Takes 2 plus monsters including an insect plant or reptile monster you can only use the first and second effect of cards with this card's name once per turn and if your opponent activates a monster effect you can activate this effect for the rest of the turn neither player can activate the effects of monsters in their hand in their hands that's actually really powerful and honestly i really do like that and then the other effect is if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one insect, plant, or reptile monster you control, place it on the bottom of the deck, and then if you do special summon this card, also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except insect, plant, and or reptile monsters. So realistically, having all the link monsters with that clause is very, very powerful because in a state of the game where you can get multiple insect, plants, and reptiles out on the board, it can be very deadly for your opponent. So far, Legacy Destruction is definitely looking like a interesting set overall, and I am very excited for it. Cannot wait to see what players do when this set drops in April. Next up, we have the big boss of the deck, and it, it is a Link 5. We have Raika no Dioga. It is an Earth Insect Link Effect Monster, Link 5, 3300 attack, pointing left, right, bottom left, bottom right, and bottom. Two plus insect plants and or reptile monsters, and you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If a monster is special summoned from your opponent's deck and or extra deck, you could destroy two monsters on the field. Oh, non-targeting removal. That is super powerful and then the other second effect is the exact same thing as the others if this card is in your graveyard you can target one insect plant or reptile monster you control place it on the bottom of the deck and if you do special summon this card also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except insect plants and reptile monsters so let's say you manage to get this out you summon out the level the link four again and then you link four and the link five to make a link five and then you can summon out another plant insect and or reptile if you can to summon back this link five so essentially you're gonna have two link fives on the board that with three thirty three hundred attack 
that is actually going to be scary, and I think this is going to be a deck that's heavy in the grind game because of what it can do. So let's take a look at the spell and trap card because there's one of each and the names are definitely easier to pronounce. We have Rekka Frenetic Blossom. It's a continuous spell card and you can only use the following effect number two from this card's name once per turn. Uh, the first effect is insect plant and reptile monsters on the field to gain 300 attack and defense. Also monsters on the field that are from none of those types lose 300 attack or defense. So overall you're going to be getting an extra 600 battle damage in and honestly that's really good because sometimes life points do matter like that. And the second effect is you can choose one of the following effects to activate. First one of the two is add one Rika monster from your deck to your hand then discard one card. So we're definitely running Danger Mothman in here. And then the other effect is special summon in defense position one of your Rika monsters that is banished during your hand or graveyard. So it is a Kashira birth and preparation special summon effect. That is realistically good. This is a very powerful card. And honestly, running three Mothman, one Nessie, I might definitely try because of how useful Danger Mothman can be. And realistically, I definitely can't wait for that since it's one of the better ones. You can also run things like Goki Boar to get a search of an insect monster, so there's a lot of options that we can have. And finally we have the trap card. Now it's been quite a long video, but this is probably going to be one of the better cards in the whole deck, even though the whole deck is pretty good on its own. We have Rika Headhunting Flower Dance. It is a normal trap card and you can only use each of the following effects 1 and 2 from this card's name once per turn. Target cards your opponent controls up to the number of insect, plant, and or reptile monsters with different types you control. Destroy them. Maximum three, so it's a triple Icarus attack, or three, it's a Icarus attack that does three. That's really good. And if a face-up insect, plant, and or reptile monster you control is destroyed the battle or card effect, while this card is in graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can target one monster your opponent controls to destroy. So we're destroying four cards off of one trap card. That is really good. <sighs> uh, I definitely think this is going to be a one or two of, but it's also searchable. So I could definitely think it's going to be a one of because you can realistically loop the thing back into your deck, which or put it back into hand. So realistically, I really think this is a very good card. Overall, this archetype, the new Rika archetype, is very, very powerful, and we have a lot of utilities. So, with this deck being announced, I really hope in April or May, when we get the next Forbidden Limited list, they put Gloat Ball to one, because that would be a perfect candidate for this deck. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the look over for the new Rika archetype, and I have been Bolt Spider. See you guys in the next video. And goodbye.